You know it would be an amazing Blender tutorial, a tutorial about mazes. So I made this a procedural maze thing that is always solvable. Uh, in this case, I made it grass, whatever. Uh, but in this tutorial, I want to show you what this node network uh, does, or how to make it really, uh, which is to make uh, these mazes. And you can like change the seed and it's always going to be solvable uh, from one end point to the other. So. Uh, we're going to be talking about shortest path node, a uh, lot of separate geometry, and uh, that's the good shit. Let's make it. Uh, let's go full screen. Take everything, delete it, add in a cube, go to geometry nodes, make that a geonodes object, and delete the input. The name of the game is making a grid and then deleting away things selectively so that we're left with something that is one, a maze, and two, has to be solvable. So we need to delete it in this kind of uh, very intelligent way. And you know, these tutorials, they come out very intelligent. Okay, take the grid, add vertices. I'm gonna make it a 25 by 25 maze, and I'm gonna make a path from one endpoint to the other. Um, probably a bit more chaotic than this. That will be the solution to the maze. And then we're gonna delete that away. So we know that there's definitely gonna be a solution. If you've never tried shortest uh, edge path node, it's okay. Most people don't try it until they're 18. Take shortest edge path node. Turn this into a selection, and here's how you use it. The shortest edge path will take some end vertex, and with this node, some start vertex. So in other words, we have a start point and an end point, and it will calculate an edge path that will be turned into a selection uh, based on some edge cost. Okay, so I said a lot of words. Here's how you do it. Connect this to this. Uh, we need to set a end vertex and a start vertex. So I'm going to use the index and ask, hello, uh, where is this index equal to? So we're using the compare node. We could use an integer. Uh, where is this index equal to, let's say, 5? So indexing starts at 0 and then goes upwards here. So we'll have an endpoint roughly here at 5. Um, and not greater than, equal to. And I also want a uh, start uh, vertex. It's kind of in reverse order. Uh, we know that there are 25 times 25 uh, minus one, technically, uh, vertices. So I'm just going to take this and subtract away a few. So we know that we're on the final column and connect that. If we now, and it looks like we just did nothing here because there's no geometry input output, right? But it's going to output a selection, which we can use uh, if we use a, you could use a delete geometry or a separate geometry, whatever. If we do this, you can see it's taken one endpoint and another and calculated a shortest path. And if you think about it, this is the shortest path or one of the potential ones um, because we don't have any randomness going on. If I change the position, you can see it's basically saying, where's my start point? It's going to change it. And where's my end point? And when they're synced up on the y-axis, of course, it's going to be a straight line. Uh, to make this look more chaotic, I'm going to add a bit of an edge cost, which says... Not every edge is equal. Some of them are like walking through mud. Some of them are like walking through very like thin water. So there's going to be different difficulties and it's going to choose the shortest path with these difficulties in mind. So we, you can either use a noise texture or a random value here. And you can see as we uh, change the seed, we're going to get a more chaotic random path or shortest path. And again, the reason that it's jagged is uh, it said, I can't go here because it, the edge cost is too high. I may as well go up. Um, and it's calculating what the optimal path is. If we now look at the uh, inverted version, you can see we've taken away this path, which means that if we keep removing stuff, no matter what, uh, this maze is going to be solvable. So I'm going to separate geometry again. And by the way, uh, we could do either edge, face, or point, and I think we want point since edge has this issue. So we'll do point. I also want to separate away some random stuff, so I'm going to use a random value. So you can think of it as each point, and in contrast, each face, I guess each point really, unless we set this to face, is going to get a random number, and then we're going to take away relative to that. Maybe we should set it to face. Uh, that way there's a couple like options of where to go. Okay. So basically I'm saying each face is going to be a 0 or 1 with a probability of 34% that it's going to be 1, and we've subtracted away some geometry. Okay, so we had the grid, we have the path, and now we have more removed. Notice that this path is still here. Uh, one thing you might notice is now there's a lot of ways out of the maze. 
whereas I wanted only one in point and one out point. So we need to correct for that. We need to add those back in. Uh, I'm going to do this by isolating the rim, rimming the border. Uh, we're going to isolate the rim and basically punch out the start and end point. And that is going to let us make sure there's only, you know, one way in and one way out of the maze, and therefore one solution. So I'm going to take the position. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff that seems like it doesn't make sense, but it does. I'm going to use an absolute value. I'm going to separate by x, y, z, and add these components. Or hmm, look for the maximum, and I'll explain what I'm doing in a second, and see where it's greater than some value. In other words, I'm saying I want only the rim, and this rim is defined by its like radius, where it's like uh, not not in terms of a radius like radially, right? But just go traveling on the x and y. We're looking for for each point is your x or y bigger? That's why I took a maximum. And is it a uh, greater than 0.5? So in other words, is it's like radius outwards a certain amount? Let me just show you what this does, and that will uh, probably enlighten you a little. So what I want to do is I want to separate, again, a selection with the grid and use this as a selection. And you can see as we move this greater than, it's going to give us the border. Again, the reason this works is we're looking at a taxi cab metric, it's called. Uh, we're looking at only one coordinate, the bigger one, and asking how far away is it from the origin in a only X or only Y sense of it. And the absolute values to make sure that we don't have any like issues with negatives as you can see. So this, we want to merge uh, with this. So I'm going to combine the two. And, and now we have uh, the border completed. And just to make sure we don't have overlapping geometry, we can merge this by distance. Um, but now the problem is that we don't have an endpoint. We don't have an outpoint. So we need to add those back into this border selection. A way to do that is yet another separate geometry. And I want to separate away uh, the face that corresponds to the index uh, 10 and the index 617, or whatever you set it to. Uh, the issue with this is you might think, OK, take away where the index, and you'll see why this is an issue in a second, take away where the index is equal to 10. You can see, is that the same start point? Does it work? And then let's see, we also want, I believe it should not work, but let's see what happens. We also want the same out point, which is 617. And we want both of these to be deleted, so I add these together. I mean, if it works, it works, but uh, you can see it doesn't. And what happens is this has been re-indexed. When we separated the geometry, the indexing has reshuffled. So we can't use an index to say, oh, look at the 10 and the 617. It doesn't work. So what we need to do somehow capture this index and save it uh, for later. Uh, you could do a capture attribute, I believe. Uh, another method that I feel like people don't really talk about is using ID. So I can set an ID, which is basically the same idea. I'm going to save my uh, index as an ID, and then we can call this back later. So basically, the indexing is saved to an ID. Then we separate geometry. Nothing changes because we've baked in, we've saved the ID. And now we're using this field to compare. And you can see now it has our start point and end point. Uh, one issue with this is we do have this kind of edge issue. Uh, so what we can try to do is delete away any kind of edges. How do we, well, what's an edge in this case? I guess an edge is something that doesn't have any neighboring faces whereas all the other edges are like part of a face. So I guess what I want to do is I want to either separate or delete geometry based on the neighbor. So we're using a lot of the topology nodes today. I'm looking at the, oh, yes. Uh, and uh, sorry, I got flustered. I know, I know a friend of a friend who uh, teaches topology is, is the deal. Um, either way, uh, we're looking at the amount of face neighbors of the edge. And we want to ask, where is the thing greater than? So we want to get rid of edges that are not next to any face. So we want to isolate the ones that are less than 0.5, in other words, equal to 0. And we want to connect this here. And that should do it. You could either do edge or point. doesn't really matter. So you can see we've kind of cleaned up the thing. Again, 
I just took these edges, I said they're not next to any faces, so we looked at the face count, said where it's less than zero, whatever. Okay, so now I want to connect this back here, and you can see now we have a nice solvable maze with only one in and out point and a lot of ways you could go incorrectly. <coughs> Important thing to note here is this probability will kind of say how difficult is this maze in a sense. The seed will give us new mazes, and uh, we can control the border. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. Um, and you can up the complexity of this. Um, however, you got to make sure that uh, now that it's 50 by 50, you got to make sure that our end vertex is at least like, you know, 2500, which is 50 squared, minus like 5 or something, so that it goes to the end point. Take this, copy it, paste it here. And what else do we need? We need to change something else, the border. And you can see there's still a solvable path here, but the maze is a bit more confusing now. Either way, uh, this is what I did to generate mazes. You can take the same idea and add grass to it, hedges, whatever. Uh, just a quick demo of how you might do that is you take your output, you extrude it by some amount, and now this is kind of a three-dimensional maze with only one in and out point is how you could do that. You could take it from there. Um, anyways, that's how I made these solvable mazes. And as always, if you want the blend file for the grass thing uh, that I showed you in the beginning, it's going to be available on the Patreon, on the Gumroad. And I want to thank all 650-some uh, active patrons. You guys are keeping CG Matter, Default Cube afloat. And if you want to join Patreon, you get three and a half years worth of blend files for five bucks. That's a good deal. Either way, uh, that's my time. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something about mazes, and I will see you on the next one.